Hi, my name is Bob Bucklew. In the article in Model Railroad Hobbyists, I describe how I use JMRI and Engine Driver to create virtual signals for my Quaker Valley Railroad. In this video, I'd like to show you how those elements come together during an operating session. The original control panel on the Quaker Valley has been replaced now with a computer control panel. You see here on the left my laptop PC, which runs JMRI for me. It's connected to the railroad to my NCE command station. And it's also connected to a Wi-Fi router now so that I can run engine driver. On the right is an HP touchscreen. And I've created two control panels. And using the touchscreen, I can switch between either one. So I kind of double the space that I use on the railroad. I can use this Quaker Valley panel to control the turnouts on the railroad just by touching the lever and switches and throw a turnout on the layout. So one of the first things I did after receiving an Android tablet for Christmas in 2012 was create a local panel. Just a subset of what I had already created in my CTC panel on the computer and as you can see here, there's indicated a number of main lines and signals and uh, turnouts in, in the yard itself. Now take a look at the uh, westbound signal in the center there. Uh, that's the 14W. So the dispatcher is uh, setting up that route to, for this westbound train to proceed uh, through to uh, Pittsburgh. But you see, there it goes, clear. So on the panel, you can uh, you know, clearly see it and the engineers can follow these local panels and run their trains according to the signal. So here comes that westbound train now running in behind the yard at Lindsberg and as it goes into the interlocking here we can see the turnout will or the uh, block indication will drop. There, the signal drops, and we can actually see the uh, TOLs here to indicate that the train's in the block, moving through the block. I've been showing you the uh, local panel on a 10-inch Android tablet that uh, I got my wife for Christmas a year later. Uh, this past Christmas, I bought a couple of um, these uh, smartphones. They're uh, track phones I got at Kmart for under 20 bucks. Uh, don't have a phone plan with them, but as you can see, I've got uh, engine driver on here. And the nice thing I like about this is you can turn this sideways and bring up the signals for the for the railroad. This is something that Steve Todd has has added to it. So, but for the rest of this demo, I'm going to show you this with a seven-inch tablet. It's a little bigger than you normally would use for a throttle, but uh, it'll it'll video a little bit better than this uh, this handheld smartphone. So there's the the 10 inch tablet and a little closer here the 7 inch tablet and you can see I've got it in the uh, horizontal or landscape position and you can see the signals at CP Laurel. I'll show you how those operate. This is running the engine driver and when you turn the throttle back to the portrait position you get the throttle so you can select your loco, run your loco, hit all your uh, your buttons, you know your horn and light and the like. So I've jumped with the camera over to uh, a place I call Laurel West. And if you notice, we're looking down the track here. It's a double track main line on my Quaker Valley. It's actually the Conrail main line. Uh, heading, uh, we're looking away from uh, Altoona, heading west here as uh, trains would travel towards Pittsburgh. And you notice the signal bridge has no signals on it. Well, I took a digital picture as I described in the article of this location with the, the signal bridge and empty. And then when we take a look at what we've done, you know, here's that same location in Engine Driver, and we're showing the panel, and it shows the signals in the stop position on both tracks. So the way this would work on the Quaker Valley during an operating session is uh, dispatchers uh, radio control or contact with each of the road engines, and uh, so it might start something like this. CAPI dispatch. Dispatch answering CAPI. CAPI is ready to depart Altoona westward to Pittsburgh. No work en route. Roger CAPI. CAPI has permission uh, 
from Altoona to the CP Laurel West and follow signal indication at CP Laurel West. Roger. CAPI out. So, while uh, CAPI is getting ready to leave staging in Altoona, the dispatcher will set up the signal. There you can see on the right track there, the dispatcher set up a, a signal for CAPI to proceed and uh, indicating a clear, which means that the next block is also clear, that they'll get at least a, an approach at the, at the next signal. Oh, hey, notice too on the left signal, on track two there, the dispatcher has set up a restricting, which indicates that the train is coming up uh, beside CAPI here out of our Nola yard is, uh, is going to do some work. It's actually going into uh, Lindsberg and the restricting signal because it's entering the yard and needs to uh, be prepared for any kind of movement in the yard. So as the CAPI comes up to uh, the Laurel interlocking and enters the interlocking, it trips the next block and you'll see the signal drop there and on she goes. The nice thing is we can go on with the new thing. We can hit the next panel, go on and see the signal at our next spot. So we've got an approach so we know we can kind of keep on going with our CAPI and Head west. So as the train approaches the highway bridge at CP Lynn, we'll see the signal we have an approach there. And as the train proceeds through into the interlocking, occupies the next block, there we go, signal's dropped to a stop. And so the train engineer on the train knows that he's got to stop at the next signal. So using JMRI in your imagination, you can kind of do just about anything. So here you see uh, what I call Quaker Junction, where the single track Quaker Valley Main comes down in the back, joining up with the uh, double track Conrail line. And you see there's a, an empty signal bridge here. Of course, there's no signals in real life yet. That'll happen in a few years. I get more time and more money to get them in place. Of course, what the engineer sees on the engine driver here at this location is quite different. As you can see, the signal bridge is fully populated, including a, a stop signal on the, the pocket track on the right side where the engines are idling. But you see a restricting signal from two track into the yard. And uh, on the left side, a triple mast coming off the Quaker Valley main and uh, showing an approach down into the station. So I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of JMRI and the engine driver technology that we use here on the Quaker Valley to make things look a little bit more realistic for our engineers. Uh, check out the article in Model Railroad Hobbyist, and if you have questions, email me at bob at quaker-valley.com. Take care.